doing all we can to ensure the safety and security of our personnel as we reduce the size of our civilian footprint in Kabul. Is it I'll, longer than uh, I, uh, the, I would refer you to the Pentagon for that. Uh, Missy, please. Uh, again, going back to a, a, an earlier question about what message this is sending, can you just, um, uh, do you expect there to be, or what would be your response um, to the critics who are saying this is going to further embolden the Taliban and you know make them feel like they have you know, even more um, reign to push for um, a uh, p political agreement that suits their interests. And then um, will you um, be letting us know if, if the embassy is indeed closed? I know that it remains open right now. Um, you, you know, if you could just talk about how you're going to communicate that in the future, that would be great. Uh, well, um, on your second question, uh, we are always going to put the safety and security of our uh, people first. We don't want to do anything. We don't want to uh, say anything. Uh, that could expose them to any additional risk. At the same time, uh, we want to operate with uh, transparency um, uh, to the extent we can um, on sensitive areas like this. So we will um, strive to do uh, both of those things. And as we have more details to share, um, we will. Look, in terms of the signal this sends, uh, I want to be very clear uh, about what this is and what this is not. Uh, starting with the latter, what this is not. Uh, this is not abandonment. This is not an evacuation. Uh, this is not the wholesale withdrawal. What this is, uh, is a reduction in the size of our civilian footprint. This is a drawdown of civilian uh, Americans uh, who um, will, uh, in many cases, be able to perform their important functions elsewhere, whether that's in the United States or, or elsewhere uh, in the region. So the message shouldn't be, the implications of this shouldn't be outsized. Uh, I think uh, all parties, the Afghan government, the Taliban, uh, our international partners with whom we have been in touch uh, about this, uh, need to uh, uh, understand uh, that we intend to continue uh, our diplomatic presence on the ground. Uh, uh, at a more basic level, we intend to continue that enduring partnership uh, with the people of Afghanistan and the government of Afghanistan. Uh, so this shouldn't be read as any sort of message uh, to the Taliban. The message that the Taliban should be receiving is really the message that is emanating from Doha right now, uh, from the United States, from the Qataris, uh, from the litany of countries in the region and well beyond, uh, and the international organizations uh, that have been very clear and speaking with one voice uh, that this rather large, broad, inclusive constellation of countries and important stakeholders will not recognize any entity that seeks to take Afghanistan by force. That's the message the Taliban uh, needs to be reading. Yeah, give your point to the old college, giving it the old college try on this, but um, <laughs> when you talk about the message that this sends as enduring partnership, um, what, in what language does turning your tail and sending 3,000 troops in to, and you say it's not an evacuation, but you lost that point when you said that the military, the 3,000 troops are going to be flying this, these drawn down staffers out. I, is, I did not say that, that there would be 3,000 troops. Okay, sorry. You didn't. Others have said that that's the number that's going in. But that the military, the U.S. military is going to be flying is going to be taking these people out. That isn't an evacuation. And I'm very cognizant of the difference between, you know, a drawdown where people leave commercially or if they drive out on their own. Uh, that's not what this is. So Matt. I don't understand the message of enduring partnership when uh, you're, you're basically leaving. Matt, we can do two things at once. Let me explain. Can. Uh, we can uh, do all we can, take prudent measures to uh, ensure the safety and security of our departing civilian personnel, which this is. This is only about that. It is solely and exclusively uh, about in, uh, doing all we can to ensure uh, the safe relocation of our personnel, of, of um, uh, elements of our civilian personnel from Afghanistan. Uh, that should in no way mitigate uh, the enduring partnership, the enduring relationship we seek to have with the people of Afghanistan. I talked about that in humanitarian terms. Uh, I've talked about that in terms of the diplomacy 
uh, that the U.S. is supporting between uh, the Afghan parties, the intra-Afghan dialogue that we are supporting, uh, hopefully on the path towards an Afghan-owned, Afghan-led uh, political solution. I've talked about that in the terms of the work we have done and are doing to galvanize the international community, uh, to bring Afghanistan's neighbors together, to speak with one, and, and countries much farther afield, to speak with one voice. Uh, so we are in no way abandoning the people of Afghanistan, far from it. Uh, we are going to continue doing everything we can everything we can to bring about an Afghanistan uh, that uh, in which Afghans can enjoy safety, stability, security. Now, again, I, I'm not wearing rose-colored glasses. I, I'm not here to tell you uh, that there aren't significant challenges. That is very clear. It's very clear from what we're seeing. Uh, but our goal is uh, through uh, diplomacy, uh, through continuing support for the ANDSF, a, uh, a force that far outnumbers the Taliban uh, by a figure of more than three to one by most estimates. Warfare in Afghanistan has never been a problem. I'm sorry? I said because asymmetric warfare in Afghanistan has never been a problem. Christina, I, I, I have been the first to tell you that this is not without its difficulties. This is not without no, its challenges. Yeah, but but, but let, let, me, let me just finish. We, listening to you say this and I respect you and like we, we know we all have you, know, you have a job to do but there is no way you can sit there and say that the people of Afghanistan watching the Taliban take over provinces watching their country crumble are now going to watch American diplomats get on military planes and leave the country that that sends a signal that the U.S. is with them in the long haul diplomatically uh, look at what we've been doing look at the investment we have made in Afghanistan look at the investments whether however you measure it, uh, whether it is humanitarian whether it's political whether it's diplomatic, whether it is the security investments uh, that we have made. Again, we've cited this, this bullet point a couple times. President Biden's budget requests $3.3 billion for the ANDSF going forward, a fighting force that is uh, at least quantitatively much larger uh, than what the Taliban have to muster. Look at what we're doing diplomatically in Doha and around the world. Uh, so uh, again, th this is about one thing and one thing only. It's about the priority this president attaches to the safety and security of Americans uh, who serve in this government, civilian Americans uh, who serve uh, in this government. Uh, that is not a priority uh, that we are willing to risk. Uh, and so what we are speaking about today uh, is about that and about that only. Uh, again, our partnership uh, in any number of forms with the people of Afghanistan that ultimately is aimed at bringing about over the longer term, we know this will have challenges. Uh, an Afghanistan in which all Afghans can enjoy a measure of safety and security and stability. We're not there yet. We're not close. Uh, but that remains our goal, and we're going to continue doing everything we can to do that. Nick, I want to ask you about the Western Hemisphere Let, we'll, do, we'll do one more on Afghanistan. To Afghanistan in order to now pull these staffers out. The fact that it seems U.S. officials were caught off guard by the speed of the Taliban offensive. Did the administration fail to plan or fail to understand what U.S. military withdrawal from Afghanistan would uh, entail, would, would, would create? Connor, uh, I presume my Pentagon colleague will speak about this in more detail, but, uh, but I, I just want to contextualize. Uh, this is not the reintroduction of military forces uh, to pursue the mission that they were pursuing prior to May 1. Uh, this is uh, the repositioning of forces to Hamid Karzai International Airport uh, in order to help affect uh, the safe reduction in our civilian personnel. That is the only thing this is about. Uh, this is not about re-engaging uh, militarily uh, in conflict uh, in Afghanistan. Plan or to understand what would happen after U.S. troops as, started as to leave. I, I, I started with this point, and it, it bears repeating. Uh, all throughout, uh, before the president announced his decision, after the president has announced his decision, uh, before the latest surge in, vi in violence, in the context of this uh, ongoing surge in vi violence, we have always been engaged in contingency planning. Uh, this was a contingency that we had foreseen. This was a contingency uh, that we had planned for. Uh, so it is not the case that we're being caught flat-footed. 
uh, we engage in contingency planning. DOD does the same, uh, knowing that this situation is going to be fluid. Uh, recently, the trend lines have not been moving in the right direction. Of course, our goal um, through uh, diplomacy on the part of the State Department is to reverse those trend lines. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we had engaged in contingency planning uh, to um, be prepared for a situation just like this. Yes, please, in the back. There are some reports that suggest that the uh, Special Envoy Ambassador Zalmay Khalilzad is trying to convince Taliban leaders to spare the U.S. Embassy, attacking the U.S. Embassy in Kabul in exchange for international aid in any future government, even that includes um, the possibility of, of, of Taliban leaders. Uh, is that option, is the U.S. Uh, considering that option in order to preserve and keep a uh, sort of presence in Afghanistan in case there is a fall of Kabul in the hands of Taliban? Well, uh, again, we are not going to put uh, too much stock, certainly, in the words of the Taliban. We are going to be looking at their deeds. Uh, but in terms of what they have said, uh, the Taliban have said very clearly that they are not uh, out there to target diplomatic compounds. Now, um, we are not going to rest on the words uh, of a group like the Taliban. Uh, that is precisely why uh, we are taking prudent precautions uh, in the repositioning of these assets in order to help uh, affect uh, the safe reduction in our uh, civilian uh, personnel. But um, not only have the Taliban said that, um, but uh, of course, um, in the February 2020 U.S. Taliban agreement, uh, the Taliban uh, also um, uh, made assurances uh, that our forces uh, would not be targeted. Uh, we have been very clear that if the Taliban go back on that commitment, whether in the context of uh, this reduction in uh, civilian staffing, uh, whether in any other context, uh, we will respond and we will respond in no uncertain terms. Uh, we have uh, not left any ambiguity about that. This is at the border of Colombia and Panama. There are thousands of migrants that want to come here to the U.S. The Colombian government has called it like a humanitarian tragedy and has asked the U.S. for help. What is your message to those migrants that want to come here and to the Colombian government, particularly to the foreign minister that is calling the U.S. so they can help Panama and Colombia in this issue? Well, of course, Colombia uh, is a strategic partner of ours. We work very closely uh, with Bogota. We work very closely with the Colombian government uh, on any uh, number of fronts. Uh, Colombia has, uh, for example, generously hosted uh, Venezuelan refugees. Uh, Colombia has been a constructive force uh, when it comes to uh, what we collectively um, are doing to try to support the democratic aspirations uh, of the Venezuelan people. Um, we've been in a position to uh, provide uh, humanitarian uh, assistance to the region, including to Colombia for um, uh, its willingness uh, to accept refugees from uh, Venezuela. Uh, at the same time, uh, we are still very much in the midst of a pandemic, uh, and uh, there are uh, certain limits on what we're able to do uh, at the moment, but we'll continue to work on this very closely and support uh, the government of Colombia how we can. Yes. Nicolas Maduro has said that the first point in this agenda is a total withdrawal of the U.S. sanctions to Venezuela. Are you reviewing the sanctions? Are you willing to waive sanctions in order so the the, the conversations keep forward, go forward? Well. Um, we have long been committed to promoting accountability uh, for the Maduro regime and its enablers uh, for the actions that uh, undermine um, a democracy or fail to respect uh, human rights. We've also been clear that the Maduro regime can create a path to easing sanctions by allowing Venezuelans to participate in long overdue free and fair presidential, parliamentary, and local elections. Uh, creating the necessary conditions to enable free and fair elections take place in Venezuela. It requires the Maduro regime uh, to engage in sincere discussions with the opposition, led by, of course, by uh, interim President Juan Guaido, uh, that result in a comprehensive negotiated solution to the Venezuelan crisis. Uh, as we noted uh, in the June 25th joint statement with our EU and Canadian partners, we welcome substantive, credible advancements to restore democratic processes and institutions in Venezuela, uh, and uh, are willing to review sanctions policies based on meaningful 
progress in comprehensive negotiation. But that's what we need to see, meaningful, I'm, I'm sorry, meaningful about progress. The, about the request of President Ivan Duque to designate Venezuela as a state sponsor of terrorism. Are you reviewing this request? Uh, we um, uh, make those determinations um, based on uh, the facts uh, and based on um, uh, the- How far killed in Venezuela and they even did a, a, a terrorist attacking a military base in we, Cucuta, we, where American we, troops We were. make those determinations on a regular basis um, based on the facts and our assessment of them as a matter of policy. Um, we don't comment on deliberations or potential del deliberations uh, related to the use of a designation authority. Last question, please. Okay, uh, this, is, uh, this is on uh, the media law in Poland. Ah, yes. Uh, there was a uh, strong statement by Secretary Blinken yesterday, and as I understand, Secretary Wendy Sherman spoke with the Polish authorities yesterday, but uh, uh, the media law seems to be going forward. So uh, what steps are you planning to take and, and what is on the table now? Well, you did hear directly from Secretary Blinken yesterday uh, on our deep concern, the very troubling developments uh, that transpired uh, in Poland yesterday. The Secretary's state statement uh, speaks for itself. Uh, we are deeply troubled by the two pieces of legislation that Poland's parliament passed yesterday. Uh, I said this yesterday, uh, the Secretary said this in his statement, but Poland is an important NATO ally uh, a NATO ally that understands the transatlantic alliance is based on mutual commitments, mutual commitments to share democratic values and prosperity. Uh, so with that in mind, we urge the government of Poland to demonstrate its commitment to these very shared principles, uh, not only in word, um, but also in deed. I will- so what steps are you going to take now? What is, what is on the table? So we are engaged uh, diplomatically. Uh, you cited one step uh, that we took um, but given the level of uh, concern, um, we will remain engaged on this uh, and uh, both publicly, uh, as I just did, and privately, uh, we are uh, urging the government of Poland to demonstrate its commitment uh, to these shared democratic values. Yes. Uh, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan visited Brazil last week and expressed confidence in Brazilian electoral system. But after that, uh, President Bolsonaro continues to insist that the voting system in Brazil is not trustworthy. And this week we saw a military parade near the Congress just hours before uh, legislators were scheduled to debate a bill about the current voting system. So uh, I have two questions. First is how does the U.S. seize this military parade uh, in this context that uh, we are having in Brazil right now? And the second is, if President Bolsonaro continues to argue, argue without evidence that the voting system is fraudulent, is the U.S. going to continue to engage with Brazil, or is the U.S. going to take some other measure? Well, I don't have a specific comment on uh, the parade, but let me say broadly, uh, and as you alluded to, the National Security Advisor and a delegation uh, was uh, in uh, uh, Brasilia um, within the past few days. Uh, we firmly believe that Brazilian authorities can carry out free and fair elections that represent the will of Brazilian voters, uh, as they have uh, on many occasions in the past. Uh, during uh, National Security Advisor Sullivan's uh, trip to Brazil, he stressed the importance of not undermining confidence in the election process, uh, especially since there were no signs of fraud in prior uh, elections. Uh, that was his message. Uh, that will continue to be the message we reiterate. Thank you all very much. Non-contentious question, uh, and it's extremely brief. It okay. has to do with Bahrain. So if you don't have an answer at the top, of, uh, I guess it could be taken. And it's just about um, uh, there are numerous prisoners who are deemed by human rights groups as being political prisoners in Bahrain. Uh, there's an academic who's on a hunger strike now in now in a month, uh, a month into it, and um, groups have been asking the U.S. to get behind calls for these for for the release of this one guy, but also others more generally. Is this something that has been brought up with Bahraini officials recently by this administration? I, I, I don't know uh, enough about the case offhand, so we'll see if we can get you uh, some information on that. Anything in general, on this, the general situation. Great. Thanks. Will do. Thank you all very much.